Tabu, 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 tabu. Tabu.
that was pretty decent. <laughs> Proper never mind. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Had a total brain fart. Oh, man.
was shit, but I really liked it. Woo, <laughs> baby! <laughs> Today we've had Magic Mountain in the studio with us. We've been doing this in association with Come Play With Me, Aston Microphones, High Park Book Club and Iger Studios. We are joined by Magic Mountain. Hello. 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 So we've just heard four tracks off your debut album. Tell us a little bit about the writing process for this album. Um, Lynn's kind of started off a load of the tunes. Yeah, I mean it's it's been done over quite a few years really. <laughs> we've sort of, we've done it quite slowly and, and sporadically around like other projects and things, but yeah, I kind of started off um, writing quite a lot of the tracks just on guitar and doing some like vocal harmonies and stuff like that. And then wrote these guys in and sort of fleshed it out together. And then you, you tend to do a lot more of the lyric writing. It's collaborative still, but you tend to lead on that a bit, don't you? Yeah, I, I think I was at a point with my other band horses where I was like a bit uh, stuck on like what to do musically, like in a bit of a rut and then Linz was just like, oh, can you like help finish off some of these songs? And it was actually really nice just like putting some bass over stuff that was already there, like rather than coming up with a song from scratch sort of thing. I had not like fully done much songwriting either in that sense of like, you know, playing in loads of different bands and stuff and, and inputting and making my own parts and things, but not actually being like, how do I write a song? I'm going to, you know, sit down and do something from start to finish. So actually, kind of would get like 70% of the way and then be like, not quite sure where to go next. So then, yeah, I wrote these guys in and yeah, bash them out in practice and... But then some of the la later stuff that we've done, we've kind of written like in, in the rooms, rooms in like the you've room. kind of written stuff and then yeah. we've kind of like messed around with mm. like structure and yeah. stuff. Yeah, they've all been a little bit different actually. Yeah, it's, which, is, which is great actually. Mm. It's, a, it's a real record of the genesis of the band so far, isn't it really? Mm. So um, we've we've been chatting with Tony from Come Play With Me, who's uh, obviously had a lot of input in your guys' past, um, whether it's through Pulled Apart By Horses or whether it's through Magic Mountain um, with the seven inch that you guys released. Um, I don't know whether that was your first release. Yeah, um, off the top yes. of my head. it was, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it might have been. So yeah, they've they've literally had a hand in everything from day one. So Tony's, Tony's fired off a few questions for us for today um, because he knows you guys better than most people on the lead sort of scene, as he does with everyone um, <laughs> nowadays, as it seems. A lot of people on the lead scene have kind of considered what you're doing in Magic Mountain as a bit of a supergroup sort of feel, really. I mean, obviously yourself uh, with Menace Beach, Skylarkin, um, and yourself pulled apart by horses, um, and yourself, Linz, with music leads and all the stuff that you do with that as well. Is this the sort of image that you want to be building for yourselves, or are you wanting to kind of take this in sort of an independent sort of direction? Um, I guess, I mean, I'm not a fan of the word supergroup, but if people want to say that, <laughs> yeah, super, you can take it up with it. Super group. Super group, <laughs> I'm fine. Um, yeah, but I think, I don't know, you can't, you know, we're, we're not going to exactly get, a, get away from all the other projects that we've done, and I think, you know, we do want to celebrate all those things as well. You know, if you think about it in that capacity, most bands and leads are super groups. Yeah, exactly. Some people are in so many different bands. It's, it's, so been, it's, yeah, just, yeah. It's, just, it's just how you meet other like-minded people. As like, soon as you've yeah. been around a few years, then you, yeah, you basically just yeah. end up swapping bands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so um, super group kind of loses its meaning after a little bit of yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I people. think to us it probably does. Maybe to, maybe to people that are observing it a bit. Maybe and this has kind so. of been, like we said before, this has kind of been a, a project for so long. Yeah. It's never like... Let's start a new band and yeah. a super group. It's just like actually, let's just. But it is. Make music it together. is definitely an, an independent thing to everything else. It's an, yeah. it's nobody's like side project, no. is it? It's like it's another yeah. project. It's a different. Mm. It's a different thing in it's itself. It's another avenue. Linz, one many targeted at yourself. Um, cellist, first yeah. and foremost. Yeah. Do you think that your writing style or your playing style as a cellist has influenced what you're doing now as as a guitarist um, and as a vocalist, uh, whether that's harmonically or melodically or just in the writing format? That's on a interesting. Whole? No one, I don't think anyone's actually asked me that before. So yeah, it 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 was it was kind of my first instrument that I learned when I was about ten, but I only did it from age about ten to fourteen and quit because I was getting forced into a very classical route that I wasn't really enjoying, even though I enjoyed playing the instrument. So I kind of I quit and then I picked up guitar and self-taught when I was like fifteen. And then I didn't actually come back to cello for like ten years until I started playing just before I started playing with grammatics, which is a bit nuts to think about it. Like, mm. oh yeah, I just haven't played cello for ten years and then join 
uh, yeah, really intense, <laughs> intense band. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it definitely has kind of worked. I think they've worked together, like you said. I think about the, like harmonically, but how I how I played in grammatics was very. Um, it would either follow bass lines or follow melodies, whereas how I've used it personally when I've done some of my other writing stuff is very much like layering things or thinking about harmonies and stuff like that. So I think, I guess definitely with maybe not as much guitar, but maybe with like some of the vocals and vocal harmonies, it's probably influenced. Mm. Um, but they kind of, yeah, it all kind of merges, I guess, because I'm not like really classically trained. It's like... But you've it, ended up doing like quite a lot of session stuff with yeah, other bands with because band. yeah. they're like, we don't know how to write the music well, like, yeah, for I you to play. I don't read music, I do it all yeah, by yeah. ear, so actually it's like it's quite like a weird niche. <laughs> the same as like a guitarist yeah. doing a session with a band and jamming with them or whatever, which yeah. is kind of like quite unique. I, I think guess. as well, like getting used to, I find it like fairly easy to sort of improvise on cello and I think that's also similar to like the solo, the lead sort of parts that I do, I guess. So yeah, there probably are things. I've not really thought about it that much actually, so. Quite when are you gonna put your cello through a fuzz pedal? A fuzz pedal. Well, that was the next question. Very <laughs> sick. Yeah, so like Give the people what it. they want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People what they want. <laughs> we actually want all three of you to learn cello and just do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like that band, some... what are they called? Apocalyptica or something. Oh, it's like yeah. three oh, cellist yeah. guys and they're just like, <laughs> playing cool Metallica and stuff. Cello. <laughs> <laughs> so the the album, um, tell us a bit about how it was recorded. Uh, was it done all at the same time? Was it done in a few different locations? Was it done in a few different stints? Was it just one sort of start to finish process all at the same time? Mm. How did you guys go about it? N none of it's been just a start, a straightforward no. start to finish it's, thing, has it? It's weird because cause like the sound of it like what we were going for is basically you stood in the middle of us but well, like you guys <laughs> literally in, in the middle of a room it. with us just like thrashing it out and playing but the way we recorded it was like in little chunks here and there like we did eight did we do eight tracks and it's mainly like me like bass yeah. and drums, bass and drums yeah. and some with guitar. some guitar and then me and Linz recorded all the vocals and guitars ourselves, which was pretty cool. Like, yeah. not having, not on the studio time clock, yeah. like, ha having the chance to, like, mess around with, like, it, different sounds. It, it wasn't too under pressure, which was, which was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, we put ourselves under enough pressure to sort of do, like, takes and do it well and stuff, but, it, yeah, it was kind of quite relaxed and just didn't feel like, ah. And then we did... <laughs> Another three songs with Kenosha, James Kenosha. James Kenosha, and then he ended up mixing everything, didn't he? Like, yeah, he did. Yeah, we, so we it basically pulled it all together. It took about it was about over about a year and a half in the end, mm. from the first week where we did at Old Chapel with Margot to mix mixing being finished was about yeah, I think mm. it was about a year and a half something. But we were kind of like juggling loads of other stuff as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, we didn't just spend every day for 18 months recording, because, like, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> You'd absolutely gone insane by that point. Yeah, I don't think you would have still been abandoned. <laughs> I think it would be a very, very different record as well, wouldn't it, probably? Yeah. yeah. Far more hateful lyrics. <laughs> I, don't yeah. I don't know what it would have been if we'd have just been doing 15 that. guitar solo overdubs. Oh, like. <laughs> what else can we do? Just yeah. Keep going. The cello parts. That would have yes. been it for 18 Big months. Muff cellos. Yeah. Big Muff cellos. I mean, cellos. there is a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> that would have happened then. There is some cello on the album, which I'm kind of pleased with, but it's not that fuzzy, no. It's just not enough. That's, chunky that's cello. It is. Chunky <laughs> cello. A bit of chunky cello. A bit of chunky cello. Um, <laughs> so, um, one for yourself as well, Tom. With the stuff that you do uh, with Magic Mountain compared to Pulled Apart by Horses, how do you feel the divide is in terms of performance element and the actual involvement that you have within the band um, in the live sort of aspect? Um, I kind of see them like it's nice having both because it's in Horses I play like guitar and sing or like the last tour that we did I just sung in it and then just playing bass and vocals in Magic Mountain I don't know it's kind of like separate but then like we were saying like it's a different way of writing like the writing process and like just like the dynamic and stuff mm -hmm. like it's really 
it's really nice being in a three piece like normally with horses like I love it but it's like everyone sort of battling with each other like you know it's kind of like mm. the guitars are all like fighting with each other and the bass and whatever whereas like with us guys it's like the three of yeah. us you know it's like the three everyone's pieces everyone's, everyone's, everyone's yeah. job haven't they basically yeah everyone's got their own pocket sort of thing mm. and yeah it's just cool doing something like that really but I remember you saying yeah like you said before about writing and helping like finish the songs that I'd been writing and then yeah. it sort of re-inspired some of the stuff that you have went on to write next with horses and yeah, they're yeah, definitely kinda... they are very different aren't they but they you know it's influence, all influence each, other. each other the mastering for the album um, you'll have to correct me if the pronunciation's wrong on this one, but Kate Tavini. Um, KT. KT Tavini. Tavini. Yeah. Um, how did that one come to pass? How did it come to pass that you chose her for your mastering um, and how did the original communication come to that be? That was because I'd seen that she'd mastered Nadine Shah's latest album. Mm. I think I just saw it on Instagram that Nadine had, had been sharing about that. Which is a great album in itself. Yeah, it's a good it's album. Fantastic. Yeah, really good. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you know, we know a few people that do mastering and stuff in Leeds and things, but then, you know, I and we have been very keen to involve more uh, women in music, um, well, w women professional musician type people involved in the project. Um, and so when I saw that and I was just like, oh, she sounds really interesting. So I just checked her out, got in touch. She's originally from Manchester, but now based in Brighton and um, checked out some of her stuff and got a quote from her and we were just like, yeah, let's just do that. And it was quite, it was really simple mm -hmm. and she's like really on it, really, yeah, she's really nice. good at communicating and mm -hmm. just just did it really, it was like easy. It was just done, it was like the yeah. final piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. and there was just no, yeah, no bother at all and she did a really good job. Uh, she's a fantastic engineer and actually the, the stuff that she's done, I actually had a little bit of a look through all of her stuff uh, before I- Yeah, she's, done, qu she's done quite a lot of eclectic stuff. I think she's yeah, done things also, from like metal to orchestras, like yeah. crazy. But just as good at a job across the board. We're though. down as metal on her website. Oh, we're uh, down as metal, yeah. You're down as metal. Website, yeah. That's metal! <laughs> <laughs> Take it, run with it. You're, yeah. you're a metal band from this point on. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. Rock and roll. <laughs> uh, so we've got one more question for you guys, um, and then because it is ridiculous o'clock in the morning, um, I'm going <laughs> to let you guys one. take off. Uh, what, what time is it now? We're I don't know. Four? Don't, don't. Like, I don't know. What we'd like to do is throw a little bit of love out to the lead scene. Obviously, all three of you have been heavily involved in it for a number of years now. Tell us, each one of you, a band that you love from Leeds um, and a band that you are really sad to have lost from the Leeds scene that still deserves the credit that uh, obviously it, you know, it, it merits um, even though they're gone. Sure. Let's start off this end. Under um, <laughs> <laughs> your spotlight. Ever. A band that I what? have loved and lost is Quack Quack, <laughs> who were one of the first bands I saw at the Brunel. I kind of walked into um, the British Wildlife Festival, which is also loved and lost, mm. run by uh, the legend that is Mr. Adam Nodwell. Uh, and Quack Quack are like the highest echelon of like lift music. And I mean that is I mean that is the most sincere compliment. It's so, good. It's so smooth, it was so just like soft and warm and lovely. Wasn't it's just it? like Casio. Casio keyboards like, yeah, like through delay, style. bass and drums. Yeah, it was like really, just incredible. Yeah, really warm. And like, but the fact that they all just had the biggest grins on their faces while they were playing, just like that's amazing. Like, or oh, they might have just been stoned. Well, that probably that as well. You know, <laughs> like, I kind of went in expecting because obviously there there were some really really heavy kind of angry bands on as well. So I kind of went in like braced myself for that and was just enveloped into this lovely cloud of kind of like lo-fi just kind of keyboard meandering and it was it was wonderful and I miss it dearly. Mm. What, do you, what do you like now? And then at the other end of the spectrum uh, <laughs> is a, I guess it's a band, but it's just kind of a, a, a harsh noise duo called Soft Issues. So uh, if lift music isn't your thing and kind of eternal despair and kind of <laughs> sonic obliteration is what you're into, into uh, definitely check out Soft Issues. Sweet. Lint, we'll move on to you next. Um, I will, I'll do it in the same order then. My <laughs> band that I've loved and lost, uh, I'm gonna have to say this at all. 
who are the greatest Leeds band of all mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. probably, <laughs> maybe, um, who were quite obviously a big influence on mine and Tom's first band, Mother Vulpine, um, with a lot of the, what was it, Drop C that we were playing in and shirts and ties and all that kind of stuff. Mm. <laughs> it was Only the shirts and ties, so nothing, <laughs> nothing down, down there. <laughs> um, but they were Winnie the Pooh style. <laughs> <laughs> they were such an amazing band and like, it's, we're, I mean, we were trying to describe them before, weren't we? Just like, I don't really know how you describe them, kind of. Um, what did we say? What were we it saying? It was kind now? of Queens, like, of, Queens of the Stone, Stone Age, yeah. Interpol, Mogwai, yeah. but with like Woo's haunting vocals yeah, and like, like, like fast, like dancey, sort of crowdy yeah, fa- drums. Yeah, fastest drumming. Yeah. And they were just absolutely amazing. And they did, yeah, they did like a kind of one off. Uh, not, it was like a reunion show, wasn't it, with mm. Ford Russia? Um, and yeah, I think I just sort of went to heaven and probably cried. And yeah. <laughs> tears, just, were, like, yeah. tears were definitely shared for that um, But yeah, that, yeah, they are an amazing band um, and some good friends of ours as well, so it's great. Um, a band that I have been enjoying, I would say, is Team Picture. I really love Team Picture. Um, they've, they, I think their new album came out in the summer, in June. Um, but there's some, yeah, just really great, really good tracks on there, and quite um, kind of intimate and a bit floaty, but indie and just yeah, loads of great stuff going on. Yeah, that, that is a, a brilliant album. That has just been on loop in our house as well at yeah, the moment. Really so good. yeah, very very good choices there. So um, and last but not least, Tom himself, loved and lost and then loved. Uh, Loved and Lost would be the Leeds band Grammatics that Linz was in for a, for a little, little bit. period of time. <laughs> but um, a bit of time. Like their, it's their debut album? Yeah, it was only one yeah, album, wasn't it? Album. Yeah, their debut album is like, still stands the test mm-hmm. of time and like, toured with them in the early days of Horses, but then also seen them loads of times before that as like a bit of a fanboy and stuff as well. So yeah, sad to see them go, but glad that I got to see them so many times, really. Uh, a band that I love now, oh God. Uh, you guys have said. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you could give an honorable mention to Owen of Grammatic's new project. Owen's oh, new project, yeah. Yeah, Too Much Future. Oh God, I've had a total brain fart. Um, we're talking about who else? Van Houten? Yeah, yeah, Van Houten, like, been, been listening to them. to them quite a lot recently, which is like nice, warm, lo fi sort of bedroom, chilled out tunes. Um, yeah. What else have we been listening to? Uh... Also, um, Hamer, actually. Oh, yeah. They're yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. They're like <laughs> kind of useless, but absolutely amazing at the yeah, same that's time. Brilliant. It's like, yeah. it's like, if it's like the Stooges forgetting their car keys or something <laughs> and they've got to go on tour. You never really know <laughs> who's going to show up with what, but if you know it's always going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're a band that I've seen like a few times recently that sort of like, like saw them at Chunk a few times and yeah. we played with them yeah, a couple yeah, of times yeah, yeah. and just totally took me by surprise, like amazing. Yeah. yeah. Ludicrous. Sweet. <laughs> well. That's a lot to check out for people out there, um, but that's all for tonight. That's all for now, folks. I feel like the Looney Tunes <laughs> sign-off is... Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been Taboo Sessions. Um, thank you for signing in and having a, a watch, and it's time for bed, so goodbye. Taboo.